So far we have used the LMTD method for heat exchanger calculations and heat exchanger designs, but uh, LMTD would require the knowledge of all the four temperatures. If the inlet temperatures are, or are only known and the outlet temperatures are not known, use of LMTD would require an iterative procedure. So, in order to avoid the iterative procedure, a separate method, a different method that does not require the knowledge of the outlet temperatures as well is proposed and is being used, which is known as the effectiveness NTU method. So, we have to first define what is effectiveness and what is NTU. NTU stands for number of transfer units. So, what this number of transfer units mean we first have to define. So, when you think of the effectiveness first, let us try to visualize a system in which a hot fluid is entering and its temperature is changing from THI which is the temperature of the hot fluid on the at the inlet and THO where the it is the temperature of the hot fluid at the outlet. So, when you think of the the overall heat balance the Q which the hot fluid has lost and which has been transferred to the co cold fluid the hot fluid the loss of energy of the hot fluid can simply be expressed as m dot h c p h multiplied by t h inlet minus t h outlet. Similarly, the same amount of heat since it is being used up by the cold fluid. So, the cold the heat balance written on the cold fluid would be m dot c the cold fluid mass flow rate multiplied by C p c and T h T c e outlet minus T c inlet. So, that is a simple heat balance which expresses the rise in temperature of the cold fluid and drop in temperature of the hot fluid and a simple mass balance simple energy balance would give us that whatever be the heat lost by the cold fluid gained by the cold fluid is equal to the heat lost by the hot fluid. Now, when you think a little bit more I will write those expressions and when you think a little bit more you would see that there is a maximum temperature drop which is going which will be possible for different two different cases two different scenarios based on what is m dot c c p c and m dot h c p h what these the product of these two m dot c c p c and m dot h c p h which 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 are which are the capacities of the hot fluid to release heat and the cold fluid to absorb heat they together would give us some idea of the maximum temperature drop or jump which is possible for a specific situation and this can be this can then be manipulated to obtain an idea of what is the effectiveness of heat transfer in a effectiveness of heat transfer in a heat exchanger. So, let us start from the beginning writing a simple heat balance between the hot fluid and the cold fluid. So, we start over here that the effectiveness or NTU method where NTU simply stands for number of transfer units. So, this is to be used if only the inlet temperatures are known use of LMTD requires an iterative procedure and an alternative methodology which is known as the effectiveness NTU method is, is, to, be, is, is to be adopted. So, what we are going to find out is the maximum possible Whenever we talk about effectiveness, we have to express it as a ratio that is the denominator should be the maximum and the numerator should be the actual. 
any effectiveness is defined as the actual amount divided by the ideal or the maximum amount. So, in order to define effectiveness of a heat exchanger, we must find out what is the maximum possible heat transfer rate that is possible that is the maximum possible heat transfer rate of a heat exchanger. And this maximal possible heat transfer rate, let us call it as Q max and see what is going to be the value or expression for the heat exchanger. So, if I provide the following thing, if I provide an infinite length of the heat exchanger, then the delta T should approach T H i minus T C i. So, the temperature of the hot fluid at the inlet and temperature of the cold fluid at the inlet in a heat exchanger that is the maximum temperature drop that is possible. So, the hot fluid enters at T H i and leaves at T H o whereas, the cold fluid enters at T C i and leaves at T C o. So, the maximum difference in temperature which exists in a heat exchanger is the temperature of the hot fluid and the temperature of the cold fluid both at the inlet. So, if we can provide an infinite length then that is the heat transfer that is what is going to be the maximum change in temperature which can be achieved by heat exchange between the cold fluid and the hot fluid. But what is going to happen? Which liquid is going to attain the maximum temperature drop first? Is it going to be the hot fluid whose temperature is going to decrease from T H i to T C i or is it going to be the cold fluid whose temperature is going to rise from T C i to T H i? Obviously, which liquid is going to experience the maximum possible temperature drop provided an infinite length of the heat exchanger is provided would depend on the value of m dot c c p c and m dot h c p h. These capacities which are the product of the mass flow rate and the specific heat whichever capacity the the total amount of heat transfer remains the same remains equal the amount of heat lost by the hot fluid must be the equal to the amount of heat gained by the cold fluid. But which liquid would face the maximum possible temperature drop would strongly depend on the value of the m dot C p. So, the m dot C p whichever is lower between the hot fluid and the cold fluid the value of m dot C p if it is lower for let us say for the hot fluid then the temperature drop the maximum temperature drop would reach faster for the hot fluid in uh, in comparison to that of the cold fluid. So, since the value of q which is m dot C p multiplied del by delta t is the same both for the hot fluid and for the cold fluid whosoever which, which whichsoever fluid has smaller value of m dot C p the delta t drop or rise would be faster for that fluid. So, if for example, if the m dot C p for the hot fluid is lesser as compared to the m dot C p of the cold fluid it is the hot fluid which is going to experience higher drop of its temperature. So, the hot fluid in that case would reach the highest possible temperature drop in a heat exchanger which is T H i minus T C i. So, when the hot fluid has reached that temperature difference your simple heat balance would tell you that the cold fluid is yet to re reach that delta T which would give us 
some idea of the heat transfer under that situation. So, let us write it and see what it gives rise to. So, for cold fluid temperature capacity if it is less than the capacity of the hot fluid and C is simply M C P M dot C P if it is H this is going to be H for the C it is going to be C. So, if C C is less than C H then Q max would be capacity of the cold fluid times T H i minus T C i. So, T H my i minus T C i as I have explained before it is the maximum possible temperature drop in the system. So, if C C is less than C H then this Q max would be this if it is the other way around So, please note that in both cases the temperature drop remains the same whichever is whichever is uh, no, sorry, this is less than whichever is smaller it would reach the maximum temperature drop faster. Okay. So, the effectiveness so I, I guess these two are clear to all of you and then the effectiveness for anything which is denoted by epsilon in this case is the actual heat transferred by the maximum heat which is transferred. So, this is actual heat transferred by maximum possible heat transfer. So, epsilon is therefore, C of H the actual heat transfer the drop of the hot fluid from the inlet to the outlet. So, this must be the heat which is transferred actually by the hot fluid which should also be equal to C of C T C out minus T C i. So, it can be expressed either the actual heat transfer can either be expressed in terms of the hot fluid losing energy or the cold fluid gaining energy the denominator in both cases would be the minimum of minimum of the C H and C C whichever is smaller is going to reach the maximum possible temperature difference faster. So, therefore, the maximum possible heat transfer must be equal to C minimum that is the lesser of C H or C C multiplied by the maximum possible drop. So, the denominator remains the same for both cases and you can express which whichever which you can express in whichever way you want whichever is convenient either in terms of the hot fluid or in terms of the cold fluid. So, I am I am I am exp I, I am going through this part once again so as to ensure that there is no confusion in your mind. A fluid which has a lesser capacity its temperature drop is going to be more as compared to a fluid of higher capacity when the heat transfer between the two is the is identical. So, for a cold fluid with a lesser value lesser value of uh, of of the capacity would have a higher temperature drop and this higher temperature drop would ensure that it is going to reach the maximum possible temperature drop faster 
as compared to that of the hot fluid. So, the minimum of CH and CC, the capacity of the hot fluid and the capacity of the cold fluid multiplied by the maximum possible temperature drop which is THI minus TCI would provide the maximum amount of heat maximum amount of heat transfer which is possible. So, the effectiveness which is always defined by actual divided by maximum. So, the actual can be expressed based on either the cold fluid or the hot fluid and the maximum would simply be equal to minimum C, C minimum, minimum of CH and CC multiplied by the, the allowable maximum allowable temperature jump which is TC, THI minus TCI. So, therefore, the effectiveness that the way we have defined must lie within a range of 0 to 1. Okay? So, that is what the effectiveness of a system should be. I mean generally whatever efficiency effectiveness that we define would vary between 0 and 1. So, the effectiveness the way we have defined ensures that the effectiveness of a heat exchanger will be between 0 and 1. So, your epsilon should be within within this value between 0 to 1 and uh, it, it appears only when you provide maximum this this maximum heat possible heat transfer is when L tends to infinity. That means, you provide a very large length for the ten, for the two streams to come to thermal equilibrium perfect thermal equilibrium at the exit. So, if epsilon T H i and T C i are known the actual heat transfer can be expressed as Q as epsilon C minimum T H i minus T C i. So, that is the purpose of the whole exercise. If the inlet temperatures are known, this is this is based on process conditions and and uh, process conditions and the physical property because your C is simply defined as m dot times C p. So, this C minimum is the minimum of this then you can find out knowing the value of epsilon what is the actual amount of heat transfer. Sometimes for it is also expressed for any heat exchanger epsilon is a function of number of transfer units C minimum by C maximum. Okay. So, this NTU is defined as U A by C minimum and NTU is nothing but number of transfer units. I will explain it slowly. We understand that uh, I, if I know epsilon, I do not need to know what is the outlet temperature. Only a knowledge of the inlet temperature would be sufficient to find out the value of Q provided I know epsilon. So, the our effort from now on would be to find out how one can obtain the value of epsilon be it, uh, be it analytically or through the, through the use of a series of graphs which are nothing but a solution of this nothing but a representation of the analytical solutions which are available. While doing so, we also understand that uh, this epsilon the, the effectiveness is a function of the ratio of C minimum by C maximum. So, if your C minimum the capacity minimum is corresp corresponds to that of the cold liquid then, ep the, then this simply would be the C of the cold fluid divided by the C of the hot fluid. And another parameter NTU which is the number of transfer units is added in here that is an effect of the process 
the effect of the heat transfer coefficients, effect of the heat transfer area uh, on, on this so which N T u is defined as u times a by c minimum and the concept of number of transfer units would also appear subsequently as you would see in your studies of heat transfer. So, number of transfer units would give you some sort of an idea of the overall performance of the system based on the some overall coefficient. In this case, it is heat transfer coefficients, the area involved in heat transfer and the capacity factor which is C minimum. So, the if I know my epsilon as a function of N T u and C min by C max, then from this relation knowing the value of epsilon, knowing the value of inlet and outlet temp inlet and outlet temperatures of the inlet temperatures of the hot fluid and inlet temperatures of the cold fluid, I would be able to obtain what is the total amount of heat transfer in the heat exchanger. So, the entire emphasis from now on would be to find out this relation and I would show you just one example of how this epsilon can be calculated for parallel flow heat exchangers. Similar examples, similar solutions are also possible are also available for counter flow heat, heat exchangers and various other flow configurations. So, if you know the flow configuration, if you if, if, if you know the other relevant parameters, then you should be able to obtain what is the value, value of epsilon either from a series of relations which are provided or the graphical representation of those relations. So, it becomes quite easy as compared to the LMTD method from those references which are provided in any textbook to find out the total or overall heat transfer, the total amount of heat transfer and then go for the further design of the heat exchangers. So, let us start with one simple case of evaluating epsilon for a specific flow configuration. <coughs> the, the one which we are going to do is uh, to find out the relations between effectiveness and NTU and uh, we are doing it for a parallel flow heat exchanger. with C minimum equals C H. That means, uh, the minimum of uh, the capacity is due to the for the hot fluid only. So, what is the definition of epsilon? It is the actual amount of heat which has been transferred. So, capacity of the hot fluid T H I minus T H O which is the temperature drop of the hot fluid multiplied by the capacity and the, the maximum amount of heat transfer possible which is C minimum the maximum amount of temperature drop or jump which is possible in this case. And uh, since my C minimum is equal to C H in this case that is what we have assumed. So, these two will simply cancel out and therefore, the effectiveness can be written as T H i minus T H o as C H is equal to C minimum. This has been provided. So, this is parallel flow heat exchanger. So, a pictorial representation of this would simply be this is T H i T H o this is T C out and T T C i. So, this one is delta T, we call it as delta T 1, this is delta T 2, it is the difference in between the temperature between these sorry this is parallel flow. Uh, 
this is not the one for parallel flow it should look something like this both are traveling in the same direction. So, this is T H I this is T C I this is T C O and this is T H O. The one that I have now drawn is parallel flow this is for counter flow that is not the one since we have assumed parallel flow only in this case. So, the difference between the inlet is delta T 1 and this is delta T 2. Okay. So, that is how it should it, it, it should look like and what is C minimum by C maximum? C minimum times delta T minimum must be equal to C maximum times delta T M C P delta T. So, it is M C P this by M C P old fluid must be equal to T C O minus T C I divided by T H I minus T H O. So, if you if you see here m dot c p h multiplied by delta t on the hot side must be for heat balance must be equal to m dot c based on the cold side multiplied by the temperature drop in the cold slice cold side. So, from a simple heat balance it would give you that c, ma c minimum by c max is simply the temperature simply the expressed as the ratio of the temperature difference of the two cases. So, if I think of Q from here the heat that is transferred C H T H I minus T H O which is C C of the cold fluid T C O minus T C I and when I think it in terms of log mean temperature difference U A for the case of parallel flow L M T D which is T H O minus T C O that is delta T 2 minus delta T 1 which is. So, this is nothing but delta T 2 this is delta T 1 and the denominator would be ln of delta T 2 by delta T 1. So, this is the basic fundamental relation which connects the heat transfer is equal to the heat loss by the hot fluid, heat gained by the cold fluid and in terms of transfer between the heat if I include a heat transfer coefficient a heat transfer area then heat transfer coefficient times heat transfer area times the temperature difference which is nothing but which, which where the temperature difference as we have seen before is expressed in terms of a log mean temperature difference and not the average temper arithmetic average temperature difference. So, the temperature difference of choice to be used for this case is the log mean temperature difference which is this. So, as you can see this delta T 1 keeps on varying in a non-linear fashion till it reaches delta T 2. So, a uh, log mean temperature difference is the appropriate one. So, this is from heat balance this is also from heat balance where we are talking about the transfer of heat between the hot and the cold hot and the cold fluid. So, this when I write C H when we take it a bit further then Q would simply be equal to minus U A by L n delta T 2 by delta T 1 is equal to multiplied by Q by 
C H plus Q by C C. How did you get into this? How did we get this one? So, we know that this is Q. So, T H I minus T H O T H I minus T H O is Q by C H and T C O from here T C O minus T C I is Q by C C. So, this is what we have in here. So, when you have T H O minus T H I T H O minus T H I in here T H O minus T H I must be equal to minus of Q by C H. So, taking this one and this one I can write them the difference as Q by C H as Q by C H with a minus sign and taking into the consideration that T C I minus T C O T C I minus T C O is minus Q by C C which is minus Q by C C the negative sign taken outside this is what we have done. So, the log mean temperature difference definition T H I minus T C O and T H I minus T C I for the case of a parallel flow can also be written as T H O minus T H I which is minus of Q by C H and T C I minus T C O can be written as minus Q by C C. So, this is what one can obtain for the case of the heat transfer between these. See the main purpose of this is to get rid of the outlet temperature. So, wherever T C O or T H O appears through the use of the heat balance we try to get rid of this uh, <coughs> the outlet temperatures and see what we can obtain as an expression involving epsilon and N T U to express the heat transfer for such situations. So, I am not doing anything new not bringing any new concept except the maximum possible temperature temperature difference and which of the fluid is going to reach that maximum faster as compared to the other. Whatever else I am doing is simply an algebraic manipulation of the expression in order to bring in in order to get rid of T C O and T H O and express everything in terms of C C C H epsilon U A and Q that is all I am doing. So, that is the only thing which we which we are doing in this specific exercise. So, when you come back come back to this once again then L n delta T 2 by delta T 1 can be written L n delta T 2 by delta T 1 therefore, can be written as minus U A 1 by C H plus 1 by C C. So, if you look at this one I will bring this over to this side. So, this becomes L n delta T 2 by delta T 1 and the since Q is so when I bring it to this side the Q will cancel from all sides and I have minus U A 1 by C H plus 1 by C C. For the parallel flow when I express it in terms of the differences I <coughs> understand my C H is equal to the C minimum as we have defined here and C C is the C maximum. So, when I take C H outside it is simply going to be 1 plus C minimum by C maximum. So, C H is assumed as the minimum and this obviously is therefore, the maximum. So, this is the expression that you would obtain and now I bring this N T U which is defined as as the one which is on the outside of this bracket. This is the expression. So, therefore, what I would get is T H O minus T C O by T H I minus T C I which is this one since it is in the logarithmic form it is simply going to be equal to exponential 
minus n t u into 1 plus c minimum by c maximum. So, what then I have is a relation which brings in the new concept n t u which is u a by c minimum and slowly I am transforming everything in terms of n t u either n t u and epsilon c minimum and c maximum. So, when you see the last expression that I have written it still contains some of the outlet temperatures T C O and T H O. So, if I can now get rid of these T C O and T H O then everything is going to be either in terms of T H I, T C I, epsilon, C minimum by C max and U that is our objective that is what we would like to do. So, I will continue this in my next class and derive a compact expression <coughs> for epsilon in parallel flow where only the inlet temperatures are known the outlet temperatures are not known to me. So, once we do that we can have other relations for other flow geometries for multipass systems for cross flows and so on, so on for which in your text you would see the results are presented in a graphical form and it becomes very easy trust me on this it becomes very easy to solve for the unknown temperatures in such cases and then proceed towards the design of heat exchange equipments. So, I will stop here today and I will pick it up from this point in the next class to complete our discussion on effectiveness NTU method.